And in the next example, we can see that the same case function, uh, let me show you the case function again, so we can remember, okay? So let's take a look at the case function. Case, when, then, else. Oh, which one is that? It's the previous page, sorry. Come on, Data Studio, it's a live session. You have to behave. Oh yeah, it is. I'm just saying that case when page journal contains equal Q equal then page views else zero. And it's very important for you to think about this case function is returning a series of numbers. This is returning a series of numbers. The only reason I have this page here on this report is to show you the result of this case function first in this raw format, right? Some numbers followed by two zeros. Now, in the next page and in this scorecard, I have the same case function, if it loads, yep. I have the same case function, case when contains page view zero, but I wrapped it in a sum function. Now I'm telling Data Studio, go calculate all the values of this case function, a series of values, page before the first row, for the second row, and also at the end, two zeros, right? But then, Calculate the sum of those values, calculate the average of those values, calculate the maximum of those values. And this way, we're basically looking at a segment. This is the definition of the segment of the entities that I'm looking at, the criteria. And for that segment, we are returning the metric that we're interested in. And by wrapping the case function in another aggregation function, sum, average, whatever, count, you're getting those results, okay? This is powerful and this comes in handy. If, uh, think about it. If you want to, for example, if you have events, right? And you want to only return the total events for certain types of event actions, you can do it with a case function like this, okay? Also, I'm um, doing something else as well. So instead of just summing up those values, I'm summing up either ones or zeros. If it goes away, Oh, wait, okay. So instead of retaining the total number of page views for each page, I'm just retaining one. So basically I'm returning the number of pages with search query. And in, this pre in the previous table, we saw that we had eight pages that were search pages and two pages which were not search pages. So I'm counting the number of entities here, just the number of them, like one and zero, and I'm getting totaling up another metric page views. It could be anything else page views, I don't know, revenue from those pages, the number of goals from those page views or sessions on those landing pages, whatever. We could have aggregated that metric as well. And this is our total page views directly coming from the data set and total number of URLs that we have in this data set just for the comparison purpose. Any questions about this one? Here again, of course. Could we use count for number of pages with search query? Could we use count? We could, but let's think about it. Is, so, is there a way to use count? Because you use sum and then one or else. If I use count, what happens? Why it doesn't work? I'm telling you it doesn't work, but we want to see why it doesn't work. We'll see tomorrow, okay? Yeah. Okay. So the reason the count doesn't work in this case is that we have to keep in mind and remember that the case function is returning a result anyway for each of those rows. We have 10 pages. Yes, for eight of them, we are re returning one, but for the other two, we are returning a value. The value is zero, yeah, but zero is a value. And if you're counting the number of values, it doesn't matter the value is 10 or nine or zero or minus one or a thousand or a million, it's a value. So this case function is returning kind of an array, a series of 10 values. It happens that the first eight of those values are one because this criteria is true. And the next two values are zero because the criteria is false. If we count them, we get 10. We should get 10. We hopefully get 10. We got 10. But if we sum them up because those zeros doesn't add anything to the total sum, 
will get A. If we want to average that, or if we want to maximum that, or if we want to do count distinct, count distinct will give us what for the exercise? What would you two? Yeah, two. Because we either have one or zero in the series that is being written. Maximum would be one, minimum would be zero, average would be eight divided by 10, so 0 0.8, and so on and so forth. Does it answer the question, Robert? Actually not, but you had a much better explanation than what I expected. And I was thinking just yeah. use count with all, without all those one cases, but yeah, this is a pretty good example and you good use case, thanks. Yeah, we can use count when we are counting the actual number of the whole segment, the, the, it, all data. So this one, page URL CTD is the value of page URL with the aggregation of count distinct. So it is counting the distinct values of page URL. Okay, this is one way, but this shows 10. It doesn't show just the page URLs that were search URLs. It shows the count of all, unless I have not a filter. So this is another way. So it's not just one way for doing something, right? If we want to use count, then we need to filter the data coming into that count. We have to apply a filter and say, only I want the pages that match this criteria. And then the count would be A. Well, if we have that function on a page level, in that case, the count, just that function, maybe. If we had it at page level? We have total pages and pages with the search query. We have that here. We have it filtered for just a search query. So if I'm using for this second scorecard, if I'm using just... If you filter that, it will work. So if I add a filter and create a filter and call it only search pages, right? And include page URL contains Q equal. Now I'm filtering the incoming data and it should show eight. Right, because those two pages that do not match this filter will not even enter this count distinct calculation. But in this case, those are entering the calculation, but the case function is taking care of them. Okay, got it. Yeah. It's really good because it shows how subtle the changes are and how we can achieve the same result in different ways. And they're all places. There will be reports that you have to do this. Otherwise, because of the rest of the things that this scorecard is playing with, it doesn't work if you use the case function. There are some other cases where you have to use case function. You cannot apply the filter because you want those two values to be there for some other reason. So it's good to know that we can get the same result with two different options. But we need to know that for the first one, we're actually providing all values to this scorecard and case is taking care of them. But for this one, we're doing something else. We are actually removing those values, okay? But yeah, it was a really good question. Yeah, thank you.